Hey, you want to know how to increase your self-awareness? Stick around to the end and I'm going to tell you a story of how a near-death experience taught me the importance of self-awareness in my own life. So what is self-awareness? Well, self-awareness is that ability to look into yourself and understand your emotional makeup, your whole belief system, everything that's going on internally. And did you know, actually, it's kind of sad to say, they've done studies on this. And in any given room, eight or nine of those 10 people are woefully unself-aware. That's us. That's you and me. We're all in that kind of area. And I still struggle with this all the time because we have been taught that we should not face our emotions. We should put them aside, the ones that are uncomfortable, those ones that make us feel bad. We should just keep trucking along, the stiff upper lip, that whole British mentality, right? Pink Floyd has a song, quiet desperation is the English way, right? We need, we feel, to stay out of those messy emotions. And that is the very antithesis to self-awareness. So. What you need to do then is recognize that the first step to change is in fact learning to deal with these emotions, to step into that place where we've been told not to go and move ourselves out of that space where we don't know what's going on. Recognition, hey, there's turmoil, my, my back is tight and the muscles are always tight and sore or I keep getting migraines. Maybe my body's trying to tell me something about who I am and what I'm feeling. These are common issues that people face. Overstressed, overworked, dealing with migraines, dealing with pain, dealing with all this stuff, completely oblivious and unaware to the toll they're taking on their emotional and physical self as they press themselves into performing at a pace that is unsustainable. So recognition is the first step after you know what self-awareness is to making change happen. Recognizing, I am not listening to myself. I'm not listening to the signals that my body is giving me. And our body does give us signals. We need to start treating the emotional responses, the physical responses that we have within ourselves, the same way we treat a wound that we get or a broken bone that we get. We bind it, we take care of it, we allow it to recover until we can use it fully again. And when we face emotionally difficult circumstances that challenge us, make us step back or hit us with difficulties, it is okay to emotionally bind yourself, offer yourself compassion so you can move on. The next thing that you can do is start asking for feedback from people that you know and you trust. It is important that the people that you know and trust are giving you feedback on the space where you are trying to grow and change and build. If you're asking for feedback from people that love you and that you trust, who have zero experience in the world that you're moving, all you can really get from them is support. Loving, kind support. They can't advise you on steps to take because they have never taken them themselves. They are only there for support. Look for people that you trust that can advise you in the space you're trying to move. That's valid counsel that you can hear. If you're in that space, you will already have a dream, but you need to develop whatever that dream is that you're moving toward. Many people, sadly, I ask, what is the dream that you're chasing? What is the vision of the life you're building? What is that legacy you want to leave behind when you go move on? What are the things that you hope to have an imprint on society or the culture or the people that you move with? And sadly, many people draw a blank when I ask that question. Do you have a dream? Do you? Do you have a dream? Is there something driving you, moving you towards it? If you don't, you must ferret that out. That is where your awareness lies. If you're unaware of what that motivation is, you are holding aside your personal ambitions, your personal dreams, your personal drive for the dream of someone else in order, in order to receive affirmation that you're doing the right thing from somebody else. That is not a way to move with awareness. It is a way to move where you completely remain un aware of what you want. And it's sadly a state many of us fall into. So developing self-awareness is like turning a light on in the darkness of our lack of understanding. 
It is incredible when you begin to go into this and feel the change. I remember uh, I was in group therapy for quite a while. I'd had some serious trauma as a kid and I had a lot of therapy and various modalities of things that I had to go through. And I was with groups of men in therapy and to start our session, we would have to all introduce ourselves and state our emotional condition in that moment. This was incredibly hard for me. My consistent attitude, my consistent expression, if somebody says, how you doing, is I'm good. I'm doing good. We weren't allowed to say that. We had to use some sort of descriptive adjective that was beyond good to state an emotion. And they gave us even a spreadsheet of potential emotions that we were feeling. At first, when I discovered this, it was very difficult. My mind was confused. I didn't know how to identify these emotional nuances within myself that I had spent so many years living in the gray, ignoring, blocking out, and saying, these are not strong enough or valid enough to feel at this moment because I have stuff to do. I don't have time to waste feeling anxiety, feeling stress, feeling sadness. I didn't have time for that. So I would lock it down and keep moving. That gray, that darkness of unawareness limited my capacity to respond well in many situations because I had been taught, like so many of us have, certain emotions are bad. We shouldn't be expressing them or feeling them or letting people see them. They'll show us as weak, incapable. This is so untrue. This is a broken methodology that comes from a broken concept of leadership and development that was developed through a history of tribal, battle and infighting to build empires, right? We started tribal, we moved to monarchies, now we have democracies and different types of governments taking care of us. And we see that in within that space, each iteration of evolution improves. Incremental growth is no longer available to us. We need to be self-aware so we can make great leaps and changes in the world that we're facing. So if you want to really become self-aware, you got to step out of the gray. You got to feel all the emotions and accept them. Listen to the wisdom of what they're telling you as they reside in your body. And you'll begin to feel pains in your back disappear, discomfort in your chest lighten, blood pressure will lower because you're actually giving credence to the emotions that are screaming to be heard with inside you. I had a similar thing as I was sitting this is where I really understood how poorly aware I was, how lacking I was in self-awareness. I had been in a race in the Rockies. It was a 50-mile adventure race. And I had been riding down a steep mountain. It's called Kicking Horse Resort in a little town called Golden in British Columbia. And it's a very steep mountain. And we climbed to the top. And then I had to mountain bike down to another station. And I got two flat tires on the way down the mountain. And so I was going as fast as I could to catch up to my brother. And I came around a big berm. The trail ended. It was Boulder Field. I crashed. I ended up in the hospital, lying on my death. Like, well, I, I didn't feel like it was my deathbed, but I've been told. I had blood clots in my lungs. My ribs were all mashed. I had all these broken bones. And the doctor said, if he can get through the night, he's in good shape. And my spouse at the time was so worried. And I wasn't. I wasn't worried at all. I didn't believe I was going to die in the first place. I wasn't scared of dying. But what did scare me was the fact that I had always wanted to start a company of my own. And I had never done it. And in the comparison of my life as I lay in that bed, looking at my state and thinking, I'm too scared to start my own company, but I'm not too scared to go ride in the mountains and get injured and almost die. That's crazy. What am I worried about? I analyzed all that. I became aware of what I was feeling and fearing if I started my own company. And I also realized I can live with all of those fears because I had never actually looked at them and addressed them before. I'd been too scared to even go near them and work through them. My awareness was completely limited by my desire to live in the gray and not address those uncomfortable emotions that I faced. That process changed the trajectory of my life. 
It changed the nature of how I moved and how I pursued the things that I desired. I am so grateful for that because it enhanced my own awareness in that moment. I hope that you can do that without facing death. That you can read this and hear this and say, I'm going to change and examine my emotions and become aware by feeling what's going on with inside me. Stick around. I'm James Burnham. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around for our next one.